more legendary cards for Ashes of Outlay, and they just keep coming. Hey, buddy, watch this. We got my Ev Shadow Song here. Some of you will know her as the alternate hero portrait for Rogue. Also uh, closely tied to Illidan in the lore, so appropriate to see in Ashes of Outland. Four mana, four, three with Battle Cry. Choose a minion. It goes dormant for two turns. Uh, very, very fitting for her character, given that she's all about imprisoning Illidan. And uh, dormant is definitely going to imprison some minions in Hearthstone. And I think this is a really cool and uh, pretty darn powerful card. It's, I think, most readily being compared to something like Spellbreaker, because Spellbreaker is getting Hall of Famed. This is a 4-mana four 4-3 four, with a Silence style effect, and that is fitting in a lot of ways, right? Maiev does silence a minion for a couple turns by completely removing it out of play, and she even takes things a step further than Spellbreaker, of course, because the stats are out of play. They're effectively gone for two turns as well. So it's kind of like a combination between a sap or at least a temporary sap and a silence and even in some ways kind of a hard removal spell it does all of it at once which is great now i have seen some concerns that this is only going to be for two turns and then the minion comes back and you got to deal with the minion but i don't really think that's a huge problem uh, Hearthstone is such a tempo driven game sometimes it's just about buying that two turns like if you're playing this in an aggressive deck you need to silence their big crazy taunt or just remove their big crazy taunt like a winged guardian for instance just make that sucker dormant for two turns and win the game in the meantime that's the things that Maiev allows you to do also you can just buy time even if you play this in a control deck just waiting for two turns so that you can like save up that brawl or that twisting nether wait for your opponent to develop even more resources and then catch that dormant minion in the next round of removal as well essentially it just bought you time until you could be more efficient or maybe just buys you a couple turns to draw that twisting nether or hard single target removal you're gonna need for that card eventually so my ev essentially has a couple different ways to handle problems for different kinds of archetypes and decks just big taunt silences awesome buying time great temporary hard removal fantastic now i would say you know a little bit worse than a sap in some ways because your opponent doesn't have to like respend that mana but also controlled for a while they can't replay it immediately if you don't find an answer right away so i think my ev is fantastic right solidly statted body as we've seen spellbreaker is a playable card it's popped into a ton of lists maybe not as much lately but over the last couple of years still a card uh, that is seen play my ev does that and more in many ways any of the deficits to comparable cards like you know saps and hard removals and such uh don't really seem like big problems to me because my ev just does so much all at once and it's all bundled together i think her upsides far overcome any of those potential downsides meaning this is a very strong very playable card across lots of archetypes i think this one's going to be a star card so next up here we have evocation for mage a new legendary spell one mana fill your hand with random mage spells and then at the end of your turn discard them so absolutely uh, a chaos casino mage style card here where you just get tons of random stuff see what sticks and uh, maybe dump at least a few cards of value out and uh, not only does that sound really fun but i think this card's going to be really good as well uh, you might get stressed about like, oh, discards, I hate discards, but remember with a card like this one, you're not really discarding anything. You didn't have any of these cards anyway. They didn't exist. So you're trading evocation for, you know, maybe one great spell that you find, maybe, you know, three or four smaller spells that just happen to fit nicely into your turn, maybe some burst damage for lethal. But this card offers you that opportunity to make that Hail Mary pass where you just say, I don't know what I need. I don't know what's going to be there, but I need something to save this game, whether it's just lethal damage, that big board clear, some stall with ice barrier. I just got to find something, and Evocation does that really well. And, you've, you know, uh, it's filling your hand. It's not replacing your hand. Keep that in mind as well. So it does have a little bit of dependency on how many cards are in hand. But I think on average, you're going to get something like, you know, four to six cards offered with your Evocation. And then on occasion, of course, you could get 10 as well. Uh, which would give you all kinds of choice. But even in that like four to six range where I think most of the time this will fall, maybe even three to five, uh, that's still enough choice because that feels like something like, say, uh, just a normal discover pool. If you play magic trick, you get to discover from three choices. Evocation, even if you just get to pick from three choices, 
that's still great. Now, of course, you can't bank that card in hand and save it for later. You do have to use it now, but that's how cards like Magic Trick and Tracking, even Solarium, are all played already. You're not usually trying to get something for later. You're trying to find something you need right now to increase the diversity of choice in your hand. Evocation does that exact same thing. So you can kind of think about this as like a big discover card where you, maybe you discover six things instead of three, and maybe you get to pick and play two of them right away. So I really like that this card offers you so much choice, so much flexibility. I don't think it'll backfire very often just because Mage does have such a big diversity of spells to choose from. There are all kinds of different things. Namely, you're going to get some kind of freeze probably, some stall card that buys you time onto your next turn. So all in all, Evocation seems like it could fit into pretty much any kind of mage deck rather nicely. They don't have to be spell oriented. There are certainly some synergies with other cards like Mana Cyclone. A lot of people saying Kael'thas. I'm not quite as convinced Kael'thas works well here because you do need to get cheap spells consistently for Kael'thas and Evocation may not give you like zero or one mana spells often enough. But nonetheless, still a lot of spell-based synergies in mage that could work out really well. So uh, fitting card contextually, high power level card that offers a lot of choice and outs. That to me makes it a really good one. Okay, so next up here we have a Pexis Blast, a 5-mana spell for mage that reads deal 5 damage, and if your deck has no minions, summon a random 5-cost minion. So we have here a pretty cool condition uh, that seems like the start of a new deck, perhaps. No minion mage. If you don't have minions, you get bonuses. So at a base level here, as we know, uh, five mana for dealing five isn't great compared to something like Fireball, which is four mana deal six. Uh, but do note this can hit minions or face, which is pretty intriguing. But of course, if you also get a five mana minion out of it, then suddenly this is a Firelands Portal for five mana. And Firelands Portal at one time is a pretty good card. I think it'd still be a pretty decent card. And uh, for five mana, certainly it feels like a great card. So Apexus Blast definitely has some potential. I think most people would love playing a swingy card like this on turn five, even later in the game. Has some utility to go face as needed. Uh, you won't be able to summon a Leroy Jenkins off this one in standard format anymore, unfortunately, which would be the dream combo. But nonetheless, still clearly uh, some nice output on this card and some nice efficiency. Now, of course, the big question for cards like this is, okay, the power level makes sense, but what's the likelihood of this succeeding? Is no minion mage a real viable archetype? And that's where this card faces some challenges, right? I think no minion mage... Uh, we'll probably get more support. I don't think we're going to just see one card. Maybe it's in a future set. Maybe it's in this set. But uh, nonetheless, uh, you still have to have a deck that can do things. Now, I have actually, weirdly enough, tested some mage decks and some priest decks that don't run minions. And it's possible to win games, but it is surprising how hard it is to be proactive sometimes and get minions and get plays out on board. So it does often feel like you're kind of just always reacting or sitting there. And in certain matchups, certain environments, that really, really backfires and fails. So it's going to be the right kind of cards if this is ever going to work. Uh, otherwise, I can see this failing pretty easily. So I think Apexis Blast here, it makes sense. It's reasonable enough, but it's going to have some challenges to make this deck actually work, at least uh, in a current environment where we're sitting on fewer expansions. We only have four expansions in standard format right now. As we get to five and six and more spells become possible, keep an eye out on a card like this one. So next up here is the Apexis Smuggler, a 2-mana, two 2-3 two, minion for mage, so not a no-minion mage uh, card. And this one reads, after you play a secret, discover a spell. And um, that's a cool little value generator, right? You get to find some new stuff in mage. Mage has good spells, etc. But unfortunately for this card, I think there's a couple problems. Number one, it's a lot of mana commitment here, even to just discover a single spell. Because you got the 2-mana for the card itself, and then presumably some mana for secrets. Now, of course, there are some secret discount things that we've seen in the past, so there's always possibilities to help play secrets more affordably. But nonetheless, this is still a card that's very passive and just kind of sitting there and you're hoping it works. There is the great on-curve, you know, two mana Apexis Smuggler on turn two, and then turn three secret, but how often is this actually going to live on turn two in a rush meta with all this reactivity? Very rarely, so you're probably trying to combo this out in a single turn, which pushes you to five mana. And then I just don't think the result is really worth that much. It's a value generator of which Mage has a ton already. Mage can make lots and lots of value. 
And it's not like you're going to chain together, you know, four or five secrets in a single turn to really go overloaded because mage secrets cost a lot. In Paladin, this could be really cool, right? Because Paladin could chain things together really effectively, discover more one mana secrets and just go crazy, get four or five things in a single turn. Mage is never going to be able to do that because secrets cost so much. There's a little bit of a cap here on the Apex Smuggler already. Uh, and I think we've already seen secret sentry cards that do more, like Flak Mage actually reacts to the board when you play a secret. And that's probably just gonna be way more uh, useful for people because it's a tempo-based play instead of a resource or value-based play. So for me, Apex Smuggler just looks like one of those cards that kind of falls to the wayside. I don't really know what deck is making room for this or really finding a reason to do this. So I do not think this card is gonna be played. My Ev Shadow Song is a five star card. Evocation is a four star card. Apexus Blast is a three star card. Apexus Smuggler is a two star card. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for this review. A little bit of a smaller one today. It's the weekend. Blizzard doesn't tend to put out as many cards uh, over Friday night into Saturday, but nonetheless, got some cool new stuff to look at, and that's always fun. Share your thoughts on these cards in the comments below. Of course, I want to hear what your takes are. Do you think My Ev is being a little overrated? Uh, what do you not like about her? Same for Evocation. Curious to hear. But until then, thanks much as always for watching, and until next time, game on.